Are you wanting to keep your projector outside and still be able to protect it against the elements? Well, I've got the how-to video for you coming up. Hey, this is Zach with Toiling Troubles DIY. If you've been following the channel the past couple of years, you'll probably have noticed a video that I made where I detailed my weatherproof projector housing gravestone concept. But that video wasn't much of an instructional guide on how to make one of your own, so I decided to take another crack at it. In this video, I'm gonna give you a how-to guide from beginning to end, and I'll be adding a few new items to this version that'll really take it over the top. So let's jump into the build. The measurements for this projector housing were based off of the size of a couple of different home cinema projectors that I had on hand, so this housing will fit a wide variety of projectors. However, feel free to scale up or down depending on the size of your projector. So taking a look at the measurements for this projector housing, the base is 24 inches long by 18 inches wide and 6 inches high. The top is 20 inches long, 14 inches wide, 7 inches high on the high end, and five and three quarters inches high on the low end. And the lid is 20 inches long by 14 and a half inches wide. Taking a look at the cut list, for the base, you'll need to cut two sections of one by six to 16 and one half inches long. You'll need to cut two more sections of one by six to 24 inches long. And you'll need to cut a piece of one half inch plywood to 18 inches wide by 24 inches long. For the top, you'll need to cut one section of one by eight to 20 inches long one section of one by six to 20 inches long, and two sections of one by eight to 12 and a half inches long. For the lid, you'll need to cut a piece of one half inch plywood to 14 and a half inches wide by 20 inches long. And lastly, for the plexiglass, you'll need to cut one section to seven and a quarter inches wide by 20 inches long. Taking a look at the materials list, you'll need one inch and one and a quarter inch screws these can be either construction or pocket hole style, wood glue, clear silicone adhesive, 5 16 by quarter inch self-stick weather seal, two to three one inch utility hinges, one three and a half inch adjustable safety hasp, one padlock, one five inch by five inch PC fan, two four inch round louver vents, and one sheet of plexiglass or similar material, that will need to be at least eight inches wide by 20 inches long. For tools, you'll need to have a drill of some sort. In this video, you'll see me use both an impact and a hammer drill. You'll need a circular saw, a jigsaw. You'll see me use a miter saw, but this is optional. You'll also see me use a pocket hole jig for the type of joinery I'll be doing, but you can use any type of joinery that you're most comfortable with. Then lastly, you'll need a glass cutter or a utility knife. For paint, you'll need Flex Seal Spray, Drylock Original Waterproofer, a can of black spray paint, and gray, black, green, and brown exterior latex paint. We'll start by cutting all eight sections of one by eight and one by six material that we'll need to construct the sides for both the base and the top. Once you're finished making your cuts for the base, you should have two pieces of one by six cut to 16 and a half inches long, and two additional pieces of one by six cut to 24 inches long. For the top cuts, you should have two sections of one by eight cut to 12 and a half inches long, one section of one by eight cut to 20 inches long, and one section of one by six cut to 20 inches long. Next, I'll drill pocket holes in the 1x8 and 1x6 sections that will allow me to connect all of the pieces together. Again, if you're unfamiliar with pocket hole joinery, you can use any type of joinery that you're most comfortable with. Once all of the pocket holes are drilled, I connect everything using pocket hole screws and wood glue. Now 
Next, I lay down a one half inch sheet of plywood, place my completed base on top of the plywood, trace an outline, and then take it over to the sawhorse to cut out my top using a circular saw. Once it's cut, I then add wood glue to the base. Place it on top of the half inch sheet of plywood and then drill it into place using one inch pocket hole screws so that the screw does not go all the way through the half inch piece of plywood on top. Next, I take the two pieces that make up the sides on the top. I mark out five and a half inches and then draw a line from that point to the top, which will create the angle at which we'll need to cut the side pieces. Once it's marked out, I take it over to the sawhorse and cut the angle using a circular saw. Once the sides are cut, I put everything together using wood glue and pocket hole screws. Before I attach the front piece of wood, I mark out a one inch section all the way around and use a cup to create rounded corners. Once cut, this will provide the window for the projector to shine through. Once I've marked out the cut lines, I bring it over to the sawhorse where I use a jigsaw to cut out the window. After the window is cut into the front panel, I then connect everything using wood glue and pocket hole screws. Once the top is complete, I place it on top of the base, make sure it's centered, and then connect everything together using wood glue and pocket hole screws. Once the top is joined to the base, I then place it onto another sheet of one half inch thick plywood and trace out my cut line using the same method as before. This time, however, I give myself about an extra half inch, which will provide an overhang to further protect against rain. After the top has been cut, I then give everything a good sanding using a high grit sandpaper. One thing to keep in mind is that the smoother all of the joints are, your piece will look that much more believable. Next, I take three one inch hinges and mark out where the holes will need to be drilled.
Then using the smallest drill bit that I have, I drilled out some pilot holes so that they could be screwed in very easily. I then repeat the process for the lid. Once all the hinges are added and the lid is in place, I then do another sanding using a high grit sandpaper to ensure that there's a smooth transition between the lid and the top. Next I take two 4 inch louver vents and mark out where they need to go on both of the sides of the top. Once marked out, I drill a small pilot hole with my drill and then cut out the hole using a jigsaw. One thing to keep in mind is that you want to create this hole just large enough to provide a snug fit for the louver vent. I then repeat the same process on the opposite side. Once both holes are cut, I then add clear adhesive silicone to the inside of the louver vent and firmly press them into place into the top. Next I take my pre-assembled PC fan and press the screws into the side to figure out where the hole for each screw needs to be drilled. Next I take a can of Flex Seal and spray a thick coating in all of the gaps between the base and the top. Once the flex seal is dry, I mark out and drill the holes that I will run my electrical cords through. Next, I apply a thick, even coat of Drylock Original Waterproofer all the way around the projector housing. Next I take a can of black spray paint and spray the entire inside of the projector housing to allow as little light to reflect inside of the housing as possible.
Once the black spray paint on the lid has dried, I then take Drylock Original Waterproofer and dab on as much Drylock as possible to provide additional texture. Once the lid has dried, I then reattach the hinges to the base and the lid. Next, I add the self-stick weather seal around the top by removing the tape on the bottom and pressing it firmly into place. Once the weather seal is in place, I then add the safety hasp. For this part, make sure you use a half inch screw so that the screw does not go all the way through the half inch plywood that makes up the lid. One thing to note here is that you should place the bottom part of the hasp as far down as possible to ensure a snug fit between the lid and the top. Next, I place my plexiglass type material over the window and mark out where I'll need to make my cuts. Using a straight edge and a glass cutter, I then slowly cut away at the plexiglass material in order to make my cut. This step does require a little bit of patience as you'll want to cut away at the material slowly and with shallow, even passes. After the plexiglass material is cut out, I place a generous bead of clear silicone adhesive all the way around the window and then firmly place the plexiglass material into place. Once in place, I then put painter's tape on top and placed heavy cans of paint on top of that in order for it to dry evenly. Once the silicone adhesive is dried, it's time for paint. I start by taking my spray gun and applying an even coat of medium gray all the way around the housing. Once the base coat is dried, I then mix up a spray bottle of water, brown, black, and green paint, and then begin to spray it onto the projector housing. If you're ever unhappy with the color you're getting, you can always change up the ratio and add in additional colors to get a color that's more to your liking. Once the paint is dried, I reinstall the PC fan and call this one done. So I think it came out pretty awesome, but it looks like the lid could use a little something up top. Let me see if my friend Derek can help me out.
Oh yeah, now we're talking. to join us. Well, that's gonna wrap it up. You didn't think I was gonna finish this video without testing it out, did you? Let's see how this thing does in the rain. Perfect, no water got in at all. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. If you plan on making a projector housing gravestone of your very own, I would love to know in the comments below. If you found value in this how-to video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'm Zach with Toiling Troubles DIY, and until next time, go make your own magic.